Well, hello there, my dear children of the apocalypse. How are we doing today? Welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to the Japanese Kika. Today's video is going to be a, well, it's going to be an informative and educational rant for the first time in always. Now, before we start today's video, it is, of course, of paramount demand that I first stress out this video, as well as the rest uploaded in the month of December, are brought to you by the free Golden Eagles app. Get your free Golden Eagles in the description down below. Make sure to use the code shown on the screen right now and get yourself some free Golden Eagle birdies. Um, there's a couple of tasks you have to do, uh, you know, the standard stuff that uh, most of you are probably used to, and if you haven't given a shot to the app yet, highly recommend it, of course, if you don't want to be uh, throwing away your monies. So in the background, we have an F4U B Corsair, absolutely shotgunning, trying to get me, but um, I'm fast as fuck boy, and you can't catch me right now. And this really is going to be the premise for the rest of the video, the narrative that I'm going to be painting for you. The Kika is a fantastic plane, um, as I've learned, flying it, judging solely from the way that it retains energy. Now, it has to be also um, said that this particular round was a massive down tier, so there were no jets in the enemy team. A couple of annoying um, planes to deal with, which I'll be dealing with in the end part of the video, but... Um, the match was so very difficult for me to play, so very annoying, so very uh, frustrating that in fact the reason why we started in the middle of the gameplay and rather than the beginning of the match um, is because NVIDIA Shadowplay only records the last 20 minutes and the match lasted for over 20 minutes which will probably paint the picture of just how long I was in here trying to boom and zoom my way to victory. Now, as the vast majority of you are probably already familiar with, the Kika, when you first unlock it, only has one 30mm gun, which makes the plane really dreadful. But once you have two of these cannons, you can start to sort of fool around a little. Don't fool around that much, that will get you killed. So, I was testing it, you know, first fly out, I don't know how this thing's going to work. Does it turn well? Does it, you know, accelerate well? Um, you have to do this, I've always referred back to this as the naked flight, and the naked flight is performed either when the plane is fully stock, or rather when you haven't flown it for a very long time, or maybe the flight model's changed, or something's been done to the guns, the matchmaker, the behavior of the plane's characteristics. So, in the process of performing such a naked flight, you're essentially pushing the plane not just to its limits, but beyond its limits. You're trying to find where the plane's going to break, where it rips its wings off. That's a classic example, where... You know, situation like that, I should have had the kill shot, but I'm using stealth rounds, and I was at a at a distance from that plane, which was not within my convergence zone. So little details like that. So you're playing around. Maybe change your convergence once in a while. I mean, my personal preference for convergence is 300 meters, and I don't change it regardless of what I'm flying, where I'm flying it, or, you know, if it's a jewel or not. Um... You can watch a YouTube video. I think this is what it boils down to. You can watch a YouTube video or, or read a written review, you know, or, or you know, have a reply in a comment section somewhere for a person telling you how a certain plane should be flown. And chances are they're right, right? Chances are that if they say that plane is a boom and zoomer, that it probably does well in boom and zooming. And, and if you should be using this belt instead of stealth, which I'm using here, then maybe you wouldn't have gotten so many sparks or hits or whatever. I always still think it's it's better in the long term, you're right, to do things yourself. And this doesn't just go to war from this, it goes to real life in general. It's sometimes better to fail on your own and learn from the sort of consequences that may have. Obviously, don't fail that, you know, greatly for that consequence to change the rest of your life. But um, I think the, the knowledge you obtain from failing on your own, from failing from your own errors, will apply way more. Um, knowledge in the long term for your life because you're actually remembering something. There's an event which is sort of hardwired now in the back of your brain to constantly not repeat itself. Whereas if you read it somewhere, you know, if it's just given to you in a silver platter, chances are that you're going to start sort of ignoring it as time goes by. So, ripped my flaps off, went after the uh, AD2D, and what in the shitty fuck fuck was that? And it's like, Jesus Christ. That's what the rest of this video is going to be like. It's just going to be trying to figure out what in the shit happened to these guns, right? I'm using two 30mm cannons here. Um, they're both loaded with stealth because I'm a person who loves stealth. And they should not be doing that. Now, as, as I'm sitting here making this uh, this commentary, I don't quite remember what kind of belt the Kika has. Um, I'm going to blindly say that one of the four shells is a practice shell, which does kind of excuse it, you know, occasionally sparking, but... 
little clouds of puffing explosions like that on a plane's cockpit is literal garbage. And the rest of the video, unfortunately, is going to be painted in its exact same floor. So I'm in a position here against an F7F and I think another AD that I failed to shoot down. Um, and the rest of my team, I think, is now in bombers, so JU-288Cs. And I'm trying to find my way to land here. I'm trying to figure out, can I land this plane? Because with 14 shells, a slightly overheating engine and 30 minutes of fuel, I can't solo carry this. There's just no way, unless, you know, every shot's going to get a kill, then I can get, theoretically, seven kills. Um, the first thing I do is I zoom away, and I zoom away climbing towards the sun. To do that, I reduce the chances of being spotted, and I make the enemy think that maybe I'm going back up to a climb, and I just straight up descend, going for the landing, and, uh, well, encounter the problem numero due for uh, trying to fly the Kika, which is that this damn thing just doesn't want to freaking stop. You know, and so it's, it's amazing how I had to land the plane, then turn the plane around, and apply a little bit more a little bit more fuel there just to get back to the airfield so I can actually get repaired and uh, and rearmed and get back out there. Luckily for me, the timing here of uh, the the Quion guy who just activated the Order Avenger, what Avenger will do is similar to what a blind hunt does and it will mark one person from the enemy team for the rest of the game to, to, to actually see. This is where I started thinking about the order game, and because right now, I am targeted, right? So everybody on the enemy team knows exactly where I am. They know that I'm at low altitude, they know that I'm likely at low speed, they know what plane I'm flying, it's, it's not optimal. So I'm going to try to go and just get some speed up. So I'm not climbing much, really, I'm in like a two or a three degree climb, just getting the speed up, because in case somebody dives down on me, and God forbid the spotting system, you know, flops there, I would like to have speed to be able to counter their uh, conversion of kinetic and potential energy. There we go. We have a uh, Russian IE-225, I think, which I don't even know what it is, because I come from a land down under back when, you know, those planes didn't exist. So I don't know how to find it. It's, it's a relatively new plane. Must have been added in the last two patches. And um, no idea how to find it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that it's not a very good turn fire, and neither is the F7F that's coming by. And judging from the uh, team rosters, these are the only two players remaining. So we're in a one versus two, and I think that our chances are actually relatively high to win this. We have 100 rounds of ammunition, right, which should be enough to cover two planes, and we have a plane that's faster. And in a situation like this, if I can keep my speed up, and I if I can get one of them, you know, to get too busy playing his own fidget spinner, right, then I can engage the other one. And once it's a 1v1, we've won. So, I'm, I'm assessing here the, the difference between the two planes. I think the F7F is far more dangerous because it has more cannons. It's likely flown by a more capable pilot. I'm just judging this by the uh, fact that I've seen this guy around, whilst the other guy who's, well, his name is CCC20022001. I'm just blindly guessing from the fact that he's spraying at me from a distance of over a kilometer that this guy's got no freaking clue what he's doing. So... Between him and the F7F, I'd prefer to, to take down F7F first and then engage this guy. But what the F7F was doing here was really, really confusing me because he was flying away from me, right? Instead of staying close to his teammate, making sure this was a one versus two, he just given me a one versus one. I would have never stolen out in the Kika, but right there I could have killed him. That was, you know, all I had to do was bail out and then bail back into the engagement, but I didn't want to risk a head-on against a, a dying suiciding Russian player. So F7F comes in for a head-on. We both, yeah, that's see, that's annoying, but it's okay. It's a hit, and I'm going to assume that a hit did something, even though I know it did nothing, because it's War Thunder after all. And back down we go for another engagement. How do I plan this out? You see, I go into a dive to get my speed up. Then I see where the guy's coming in, and I just ignore him, because I know he's not going to get shots in. And before he turns around, before he has a chance of catching up to me, I now have a 1v1 with the F7F. That is, of course, unless he is able to also do a head-on. And he doesn't. What he does instead is that. And that, that could have been the most genius move anybody's ever pulled on me, you know? Baiting me into almost crashing. Genius. Even if it wasn't 100% intentional. He did the smart thing. He went into a, into a very sharp turn and then sort of dove just a tiny bit to throw my aim off. And because you're so focused, and that's something that happens, target fixation, an actual thing, 
um, you tend to follow the target, and it can lead to, yeah, you know, kind of a dirty scenario there, which would have resulted in me crashing into a tree. Now again, it's a one versus two, so Russian engages first, the F7F engages second. I don't mind, I just keep extending, and I do the same thing I did in the first time, so I go into a zoom climb. Again, from one kilometer out, you're not going to hit me, not with that aim, not with those cannons. So what I'm relying here on is that the F7F is going to do the exact same thing he did last time, which is that he's going to peel away. He's climbing now, whilst the um, Russian seems to be sort of following. So what I'm really doing is just waiting. I'm waiting for the F7F to make a decision, and the weirdest thing here is that his decision seems to be to turn away, right? He's turning back to his airfield. I don't know if he's going back to R2B, if it's a smart move to try to bait me, but with the difference in almost five kilometers at the moment that I go back into a split S, um, I'm back in a 1v1 with the Russian player. Now, unfortunately, it puts me into a head-on state, but I'm not uncomfortable going against him because I think this guy must have burnt through two-thirds of his ammunition. Again, we get hit, in this case, and it's oil tank, which I don't even think he's going to need. And I bring the plane out for a little loop-de-loop. -loop. I think the engine of that guy must have been dying out. Like, he, he's been struggling here. He really was struggling to keep his speed up. And again, before I engage, after I engage, always check my six, check if that F7F guy is coming back. And at this point, I think, I don't think he's returning. Beautiful shot there. Again, cannon's sort of letting me down, but we're sticking to it. At this point, it's a matter of, of trigger patience and general patience. If I can keep this guy busy for long enough, keep my energy up, and keep checking for the F7F, we're going to be perfectly fine. By the time I'm finished with this guy, you know, probably can go and I can airfield snipe the other. Again, back into a loop down and I don't know what happened here maybe his engine's been has been giving out I'm assuming he's been wepping the entire engagement if that plane even has web see knowledge of planes could be a could be a handy thing in a matter of in a matter of dock fighting and again horrible there my shot but then also what the cannons do so it's difficult to get the shots on target and once you do you get the disappointing sparks which really shouldn't be happening in 2019 almost 2020 dare I say He's following me up now into another zoom climb, and this, this, for example, is a situation where if the F7F had anticipated me going into a prolonged 1v1, he could have shot me down there easily, right? All you have to do is hide with the spotting system, do a zoom climb. When a jet like that is stalling out, it is a completely dying target. Finally, right? Finally get the connecting shot into the wing, and 34 shells to spare. Now... I'm aware that at this point, I still have the option to go back to the airfield to land, right? Get my additional um, additional 66 shells in, but I've decided that, that that's just not worth it. So my order of business is going to be a blind hunt. And it is, in fact, that the F7F has gone back to his airfield. And I think he's just landing. So by the time we get there with 15 clicks out, traveling at 800 kilometers per hour, Boom, 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 quick math, he will have just taken off. And what I'm going to decide to do here is, obviously, this is the end game, right? We've won this match, all I have to do is stay alive from the AAA, you know, get close enough to shoot him down, and uh, that'll be the end. But I'm too late. He's just taken off, and a plane that big with two engines and that wing cover, and I've flown it out myself, and I really enjoy the F7F, I had to pull up because a head-on was not something I was willing to compromise there. And now I've taken damage from the AAA across my plane, so really the only option I have is to shoot him down right now, and there we go, free and... What the fuck, dude? Like, Jesus, freaking blasphemous... God, I don't even want to say anything because I'm going to get demonetized, but what the fuck was that? Look at it. Look at those freaking little puffs of explosion and just... Oh, that is just sheer dog shit. This entire engagement was a complete flop up and there was nothing that I could do. I was not going to make it back to base before he shot me down. So I went for the one thing that I knew I could do with 14 shells left and try to push one final head on with him because I figured he might actually be willing to take it. And he does, but from the angle of approach and from how quickly I had to pull up into him using flaps, I didn't get the shots on target until the last second and when I did, they all missed. And I just said, fuck it. Fuck you, fuck this match, fuck this game, and definitely fuck whoever's going to get the kill. And this also begs the question, 
why is it that when a person decides to bail out of their plane using the J button or bailing out using the escape, leave the hangar, that the players around them get a kill? But when a player deliberately rams the ground, that's a denial of a kill. I don't get it, because the effect of crashing and the effect of bailing out of your plane are effectively the same, and they should both be an attributable kill. Why must there be a difference? Why, Gaijin, can't you be consistent with your shit? Now, since I'm feeling generous today, I've decided I'm going to give you this engagement as well. This is me versus a vampire, and it's going to be a bit of a cloud jewel. Beautiful. Um, this was one of the only matches I had where there were actual jets involved, and no, oh, no, there's a Spitfire. What are we going to do? We're going to do nothing at all, because he can't catch us, because it's a Spitfire, and we're in a Kika. So, little, little bits like that. Now, the vampires put their smoke on as well, and I've put my smoke on, and I'm going to just fly straight into a cloud. That's until I've reached the end level of the cloud, which is where I'm going to turn around, and then use my superior knowledge of uh, spotting through the cloud system to try to get the vampire into a head-on position. Now, the mistake that I made was that I left my smoke on. That was deliberate, and it was only done because I wanted the vampire to come at me. And I turned the smoke off a little bit too late, but still earlier than the vampire did, which means that I got the headshots first. Beautiful. So why, why this extra clip? What's the complaint? The complaint is about this. This is a moment where I engaged a Spitfire, right? And this Spitfire, unfortunately, is going head on. I just want you to notice where the spark happens. I'm going to zoom in for that. And that that is why I can't be fucked playing playing this plane anymore. It was fun to do for about five matches, but when the cockpit of a Spitfire is going to spark a 30mm shell, that is just... Bleh.